Let's talk about thermistors, light-dependent resistors, and potentiometers. I like this in my hair. I'd love to go back in time and blow people's minds with my incredible knowledge. Like, okay, so how do we get this electricity? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about this because not all resistors have a constant resistance. In other words, they're not all ohmic. Some of them, uh, for example, are non-ohmic with variable resistance. So let's look at those ones. So first of all, in general, the symbol that we use, at least for a variable resistor, is this. So it's this, it looks like a resistor with a little line like this. That's the first, in general. So what about light-dependent resistors, or LDRs? Well, those are devices where the resistance changes with a change in intensity or the wavelength of the light. So we call this photoresistance, and let's do the symbol for it. So the symbol will be, well, it's going to be a resistor, like this right here, except we're going to have two little arrows coming in like this. So if you see something like this right here on an exam, that's the symbol that we use for an LDR. So uses for it, well, for example, what if we have a camera light sensor? Well, depending then on the resistance across that resistor, then you can tell how much light there is. Or for example, the automatic sensors on a phone, for example, so auto dimming screen, things like that. Okay, so those are LDRs, or light-dependent uh, resistors. Okay, we're going to have something else then called a thermistor. And that's one, for example, the symbol goes like this right here. It looks like this, and like this, and then it goes like this. This is the symbol that we use for a thermistor. And thermistor, the key word then is thermal, right? It sounds like thermal, so yes, it's because we have a metal... Uh, where the resistance changes as the temperature changes. So in other words, it's, it's uh, dependent on the temperature. So for example, uh, this could be in a car engine, like the temperature sensor on it. This could be in your house, for example. So how we decide, you know, what temperature to make your house. This is how your house knows the temperature, by, you know, checking the resistance across this thing. And as it changes, it knows the temperature has changed. Also, same with growing crystals, for example, controlling the temperature. Okay, now we also have something else called a uh, potentiometer. So that one, it goes like this right here. And then what it's got, it's got a little arrow like this here going down onto it. So something like this. And I like this one because it kind of tells you what's really going on here. So this will be uh, some material where, first of all, its resistance will change depending on where you have contract, uh, contact. So an example of that right here. Um, Let's look at this. This could be a circuit that shows a potentiometer. So you have, for example, uh, okay, you have a battery here, and you have a resistor here, a uh, big R like this. And what happens is this. Depending on where you place this thing, then there's going to be a different, uh, you know, different resistance overall. So that's what a potentiometer is. I like this one here as a female thermistor, a thermises. Ha ha. So something really useful with these resistors is to look at a potential divider circuit. So this R2, that's where we place our different sensor, our resistance, you know, uh, the one that where the resistance changes. So again, that could be an LDR, a light-dependent res uh, resistor. It could be a thermistor. It could be a potentiometer, whatever. And the idea here is we're going to define something here called V in. In other words, you know, the input sort of, you know, um, PD here, or the input a voltage. And we're going to have this one right here, this little uh, voltmeter we're going to use, and I'm going to call that V out. So I think it's going to be interesting then to consider something. So first, uh, let's actually, maybe I'll do it over here. Let's actually consider the current in the entire circuit. Okay, now keep in mind, this is just a detector. So if we're considering the current in the whole circuit, we're just considering this right here, just going around like this right here. That's it. That's all we're considering. Well, that means then we can consider, uh, well, we can use this equation V equals IR, right, which is a formulation of Ohm's law. So we can say V equals IR. I know that in your data book, it says R equals V over I, but I prefer this version. Whatever works for you. So if we look at this near V equals IR, if we want the whole thing, well, let's define it. Well, first of all, we've got V in. Um, that's this V. And we want the current in the whole circuit. That will be I, yes. And what's R? R is the equivalent resistance. That's going to be R1 plus R2. In other words, if I want to get I by itself, I would say I equals, it will be V over R. So it will be V in, I'll define it that way, over R, which will be R1 plus R2 because these are in series. Right? So I'll say R1 plus R2. And there we go. We have just found, for example, this first piece right here, this current in the whole circuit.
So I think what we should do next then is let's just, you know, we were looking at the current in the whole circuit, let's look at just the current just across R2. So just like before, when we had, you know, V equals IR, that means we can say then an I must be just, you know, equal to V over R in general. So in this case right here, then what would we call this? Well, this would be the current, which would be going through R2, would be equal to, let's see, what's V going through this thing? Oh, that's this V out. So I'll call it V out here over just R2. So it'll be just R2. Here we go, just like this. Now, because it's a series circuit, we know that the current here should be equal to the current here, which should be the current here, which should be the current here. In other words, everywhere in this series circuit, the current should be the same. Okay, so that means we can set the two different currents equal. So that means I can say, hey, this piece right here, which is V in over R1 plus R2, should be the same as this one, which is V out over R2. Okay, what's the point of this? Well, now you can get V out by itself. So let's do that. We'll do V out, and let's see, what do we get? We get V out equals a little be R2 on the top here. So we can say R2 over R1 plus R2. So R2 over R1 plus R2. Maybe I'll make that like a fraction. All that times V in. And this is going to be a really important uh, equation right here. This, in fact, is maybe worth memorizing. Or certainly you should be able to get to it, because this is your potential divider circuit equation. Okay, so this is worth memorizing, or at least at least make sure you know how to derive this equation right here. Okay, so this V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in. Okay, so let's look at this example here. We have an automatic light switch. We have a light-dependent resistor, or LDR, and that one is activated, uh, which means the lights turn on, when the potential difference across it is 5 volts or larger. So maybe I can already start by writing myself a V out, for example, and we know that that right there will be, this is going to be across this one right here like this. And we know then, okay, so that's, it's going to be turned on when this V out is equal to 5 volts. Now the battery has an EMF of 12 volts, okay, we see that there. No internal resistance, thank goodness, it makes it easier. Now they're asking, what value of R1, this one over here, will cause the lights to turn on if the LDR resistance is 200 kilo ohms? So in other words, we know R2. This right here is R2 they just gave us. And the question is, we want R1. Okay, so how we're going to do this, it would really help to actually uh, use our equation we were just using for um, potential divider circuits. Because this right here is like my V in right here. Uh, that would be this, 12 volts. We have V out. We know R2. We just need to know R1. So let's maybe write down our potential divider equation again. So it goes V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 all that, oops, I'll make it nicer here, times V in. Okay, so this is our equation we're going to be using. And don't forget what we want to find. We want to find R1. That means we're going to have to just use this equation and, you know, rearrange it so we get R1 by itself. All right, so let's just say uh, what I can do. I can multiply uh, both sides, at least, by R1 plus R2. That'll move this over to the left. So that means I'll have R1 plus R2, let's say, equals. Well, if I move these two over here, um, I still have an R2 and a v I, uh, V in, sorry. I have R2 times V in. Uh, but I also want to divide by V out. So this one here, this piece right here, this lower part right here has just been moved to the left. This V out has been moved down. Well, okay, I'm almost done because if I want to get R1 by itself, what do I do? Well, I just leave it by itself. I can move my R2 to the right. So that means I have R2 times V in over V out. And all that is minus R2. Well, then can I actually do this? Of course I can. I can just put in all my numbers. That means I'm going to have R1 equals, let's see. It's going to be R2, which is 200,000. That's a big number, right? So I have 200,000. Okay, all that times V in over V out. V in is 12. V out is, what's that, 5. And all that then is going to be minus 200,000. Because that's R2 again. 
All right, so I'm gonna probably need my calculator to do this, so let me just get that out. Okay, so I have my calculator. I just need to move it so I can see my numbers. There we go. So I'm just gonna do this whole thing. So 200,000, all right, times, uh, we'll do a fraction right here, and we'll say 12 over five. And uh, maybe I'll just press enter on that one, and then do that minus 200,000. And I end up with 280,000. Now the answer is in ohms, of course. And if I wanted to, I can write it in the same kind of uh, thing that they wrote here. So instead of uh, 200 kilo ohms, I can say this is 280,000. So that's 280, uh, 280 kilo ohms.